joining us. This is Cooking with Coastline. I'm Stephanie Boulay, the registered dietitian, and I'm so happy to introduce one of our employees at Coastline. This is yeah, Dwayne, I'm Dwayne Pacheco. Pacheco. Nice to meet you, everybody. Yes, yeah. yes. So you've been working at Coastline for I, how long? I now? started one year ago, last one January. Year ago. It's been a year already. It's been one year. Yep. Wow. And uh, I started as a data analyst. Yeah. And, but I, uh, I'm a YouTuber. Yes. I, I have my channel and we love to cook. Yes. We love to travel. Yes. That was one we of the know. first things that Dwayne and I were talking about was about like food and his YouTube channel yep. and all the Me different recipes that he does. He's so knowledgeable. You're so very knowledgeable. Uh, well, thank you. But yeah, we definitely, we get around, we go everywhere. We, you know, between cruising, regular travel, and we eat and review restaurants everywhere. Uh, and that we, like a dream. from the <laughs> simplest little restaurants, little hole in the walls, yep. and that's we actually favor those. We like the hole in the we walls. like oh, giving, yeah. like getting a name out there a little bit. You know, we aren't bringing right. in millions of people or any of that, but we're yeah. actually people really appreciate it. So if I go to Chili's, they don't care. Right. <laughs> they, right. They could care less. We want to know the you moms know, but and I, pops. But if I go to a Crossroads places. that no one's yeah. ever heard of and it's just downtown Warren, you know what? The, the, we went back a couple weeks. We did. We did go to a place crossroads. A couple weeks later, we went back, and the waitress came over. She's like, "You yeah, the guys in the video." <laughs> She's like, "We just watched you." <laughs> so oh they they do. They share it. And then we went to another restaurant. This place called Brick in Bristol. And the guy came over, and he's like, "Did you do the aviary video?" And he's, we're like, "Yeah, oh, that's us." <laughs> so nice. and so they bring out. They're like, "Oh, you gotta try our meatballs." It's like, hey, will you eat meatballs? <laughs> so, so we it's have a nice. celebrity, a local it's fun. celebrity with you know, us here today. People, it's surprising because we weren't trying to do that. We were just right. saying, hey, you know what? We're gonna go, we're gonna travel, we're gonna eat. Let's capture it for our own memories down the road. Yeah. And it just turned into this and much faster than we expected. Yeah. It really it grew and grew. And um, I mean, we're not huge, but uh, we're doing really good. You yeah. know, we've got a, we're actually about we're going to do our first live feed to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. Wow. We're at 9,800 cool. right now. Yeah. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a live feed. And you know what it's going to be on? What? The how to make the best and how to get the best deals getting on a cruise ship. <laughs> yeah, I'll be we sure get to watch that video too. Incredible deals cruising, and people really, wow. really. We've had so many people yeah. ask us, you know, how is it you save so much money cruising and whatnot? Well, my wife is a genius when it comes to this. She's been doing it for years. Nice. And I've learned a lot from her, but she's the brains. Right. And so we'll yeah. be sure to put a link in the description box below, oh. so that way our viewers who are yeah. watching they can go right to Dwayne and Idia. And see lots of other recipes. Yes. So we've got a, we've got quite a few. We've got a couple hundred videos out there. Wow. That's and very we probably good. have at least 50 different recipes. Yeah. So and yeah, yeah. we do all right. Well, but today I know I have not made this recipe. I you know and I have made this <laughs> ah. recipe and my family went bananas for it. Really? They loved it. <laughs> That's loved awesome. it. Loved it. You know cuz we're always looking for different ways to make chicken right like a lot it's like you know chicken you don't want to make the same recipes over and over and doing a nice one pot meal for the no. whole family you can't go wrong with that so we are doing a one pot chicken and mushroom orzo recipe okay so the and first thing that we have to do we have to start with our chicken right absolutely so we're going to take the chicken we're going to Put it in a little Dutch oven. We're gonna put it with a little bit of butter, crisp it up, yep. get it nice and crispy, get it cooked, and then we're gonna put it in this oven so that it's gonna sit. And we, we have the oven at minimum temp, 175. Yep. Just to hold the just temperature, to just warm. keep it warm. We're not mm -hmm. trying to cook it further. We right. did that. Yep. It'll cook in the pan. And then exactly. we move on to the rest of the recipe. Okay. Which, uh, where do we go next? Actually, uh, we go to shallots and garlic and things like that. Yes, we do. So, why don't we move on? We have our pan. Let's see. Let's get this up to temp. Yeah. A little pan. And we did. We, we did some cooking. The chicken, now, according to the recipe, yeah. they said five, six minutes aside. No, it took a much longer A good 20 minutes to that. cook you the know, chicken. Yeah, it was probably more like equivalent to 10 minutes aside because you're fully cooking it. Right. And it has the skin on it. You really want to brown the skin. Right. So 
And, and, you and Dwayne had butterflied it, so we took the bone out. Yes. We butterflied it, so that way it would actually cook faster. So if the bone was still in there, it would have taken longer for that to get to temperature. So Basically, that's also an important thing to know you would have had well. thicker pieces. Right. And it's really hard to get, and it makes it more of a challenge where you're just trying to brown the skin. Right. You're not trying to burn it. So you, to get it cooked all the way through, it would be, you, you start to risk burning over cooking. Right. And uh, also, the bone itself, when you're trying to get a temperature reading, mm -hmm. that throws things off Can, too. Yes, so. it does. Yep. It so does. anyway, so we have our nicely browned chicken ready to go, and you'll see that at yep. the end of the video as we bring it back. Yep. Or actually, you'll see that we're going to what? You guys will splice in. We'll show the steps. We'll show some cooking, yeah. right? Yeah. We'll show a little bit of what we had to do, and then we'll bring it all together after. Exactly. But first, as but this first, we got to do hot. our shallots and our and some mushrooms. Some Oh, no garlic on this part? I thought we... Uh, uh, oh, the garlic doesn't come in at all until the broth, does it? Right. It's until you add the broth. Yeah. Okay. That's quite okay. Mushrooms and onions. Mushrooms and well, onions. Well, mushrooms and shallots, shallots, excuse me. Shallots, yeah. shallots, you know. So we're waiting for this to almost get there. I think, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's, Let's test throw it a little out. test onion and see what happens. Now nah, she's a little cool yet. So when that starts to bubble, we'll know we can start to really add in some stuff. And it should come up pretty quick. Uh, um, so anyway, so maybe we can talk more about what else we're going to do in our, with our recipe here. Right. So we're going to cook these down. So you want to cook so the shallots until they get, you know, that nice translucent uh, color, right? Um, and our mushrooms are going to cook down really nice. And then once that is done, we're going to add our broth. So we, I chose a lower sodium chicken broth. Yes, you did. Um, it's about 40%, you know? So, but if you're watching your sodium intake, they have plenty of ones out there that have no salt added or low sodium. So those are the two phrases that you wanna look at if you're trying to cut back on your sodium intake. And you actually, you actually gain some control. So exactly. if you want some yes. salt in there, you right. can actually, can, because when you get the full sodium has so much salt, it does. which I use the, full, the regular chicken broth all the time, yep. but it's a lot of times it's going in, I'm also adding in a bunch of water to a recipe. If I make right. kale soup, yep. I'm not, I, I'll use some stock, but it's not yes. just the stock. Right, so, you're adding water to it as well. When you have none, you can totally pick your level of salt. Yeah. And please, eh, as long as it's not from a, a health issue, some salt is needed in, in my eyes in every recipe. Oh, it adds so much flavor <laughs> to it. But you're right, what if you salt have a health does condition, to you wanna, me mm -hmm. is salt enhances other flavors. And We're they're starting looking to, good. They're starting to do it. They, they right, knew they'd come let's around. Add our shallots. So, yep, so we'll start with these little guys these here. No, I'm going to let you do the honors. Right, I'll, I'll just it, pass right. it to you. And you can, oh, yeah, see, we got a nice little sizzle going. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, this is two shallots, two good sized shallots yes, diced up. Two large up. shallots, yep. yep. And um, it's a good amount. Shallots are strong. They are. So, yep. I would honestly think, now, I always, when we do our recipes, we never say this is fast and firm, this is the way to do it. We always exactly. say, hey, it's a to taste thing. Yep. Everything, cooking is really to taste. What it really like. is, yeah. And there you go. So if you feel that, oh my, that's a bit much, okay, cut it back. Back, back off Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. If you know, you know what your family likes. You know what you, you know what you like, especially. Right. And if, you know, if your family likes a lot of onions and you don't, tell them they can add some onions on their plate. And there you go. There you go. <laughs> Just like salt. Yeah. Right? So if you have people who you can't can tolerate the salt, right on all right, I'll there. add your mushrooms. People who can't actually tolerate the salt, you may have to cook for them and add it. We right. go to a we go to a restaurant, a place called the Palmer River Grill in Warren, okay. and it's home cooking, family meals. Oh, that's the, nice. They are busy. The parking lot is packed on a Wednesday afternoon, every day. Wow. Very few people who aren't seniors go to that restaurant. When we go to the restaurant, I'm in my 50s, we are usually some of, one of the youngest people in the restaurant. Wow. And my first impression is, when I went there, was the food was excellent, and every bit of it needed salt. Needed <laughs> salt, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah, wow. So I had to add salt, but you know what? They're cooking for that group of people. They know right. these are the people who are coming and yep. they all, you know, have health concerns and yep. justifiable. Yeah. So they actually toned things down mm -hmm. and I didn't see a table that didn't have salt on it. 
Right. So they know. They're like, yep. someone's going to come. They're going to want a little. Well, it's easy enough to add. Well, you know, and salt, <laughs> too. So even like adding salt to onions, right? You don't add salt to onions to um, make it salty. You add salt to enhance the flavor of it. So it draws out the moisture. It yep. makes a nice and concentrated flavor. It's and beautiful. And it'll caramelize better. And it will caramelize You get a little bit better. more of the browning because it's pulled the moisture mm -hmm. out of the onion. Yep. And I think that was your point also with the shallots over the onions is that right. happens a little more readily. Yes. That's a little easier because it's slightly different. Yeah. And yes, it I does. see, the only thing, so what's happening here, this is really nice to see mm -hmm. that it's starting to get translucent a bit. They're starting to get clear. The mushrooms are starting to get that nice little glaze to them. Yep. And they'll need to go a, little, a bit more. But see, I don't, you can't help it. Whenever you <laughs> cook things like onions or cook vegetables, they always lose that beautiful color they started with. Yeah. And outside of blanching, it's almost impossible to keep right. it. Right. So at this point, it has cooked like that nice little purplish tinge that it had. Yeah. It disappears. Right. But it's going to be part of a nice, a beautiful recipe. Exactly. So and you know, and we're adding we a are lot of spinach in the end, so that will give it that nice and pop of color that and it And spinach needs. is one of the ones that turns darker. Mm -hmm. So that'll really hold a nice yeah. color. And you got a bit of time and whatnot. So yes, we do. It'll keep it dressed up. We're going to keep it looking good. Yes. <laughs> so that's this nice. This is looking good. But you good. are making some nice progress there. I know. So now, my question, when does the flour go in? Because I thought you might actually be using the flour at this stage of cooking. Right. Right? So, so actually, Because the flour should brown. Right. So hold on. I need to double check She's going to double check. My recipe. Right now. Hold on. Some flour in there. So actually, <laughs> yeah, we I'll need to do a little bit checking. of garlic and a little bit of thyme, and then we do the flour. And then some flour. Yes. So, so we do. So we have a couple of additions before we start to get into like broth. Right. OK. Well, yep. So do you want me? Here, I'll let you. It's your turn again. You can okay. go right back to your seat. I didn't oh, do much. OK. A typical okay. guy, I just touch it. I'm good. No, that's all right. <laughs> so, so we're going to add our thyme, and we're going to add some garlic. So you're going to add all, all the thyme, the thyme, all of it. It's, so you've got, it looks like about two teaspoons that yeah. you went with. Yeah. Now I know this recipe says, what, like four, four you can use. Yeah. It's really We're a preference. We're both not big time people. It's a preference. Actually, We're so not. We're no. not big time people. So, and as we said, so we are going to get some garlic in there. Yep. But we're also going to reserve some of the garlic. Yes. Because getting, we want to make sure we get a bit of that flavor later on too. Mm -hmm. So most of the garlic went in now. That's not going to cook as much in the end. It's just going to hit, go into the, into the stock. Yes. It'll give it a few minutes to make sure it cooks down. You don't want it to stay this color, you want it to end up clear as well. Right. You don't want to chew garlic. No. Chunks of garlic are never good, but you want a much stronger flavor because I feel, especially you've got orzo, you've got cream, you've got starches and things that are going to mute flavors. Exactly. So let's keep a little bit going in the end and we'll come back to our garlic. That'll be later. All right. We're gonna need so. to scrape off these beautiful bottom bits over here. Oh. How See that? Oh yeah. They look so good. They look so nice. All right, so. All right, so now we're gonna add the flour. It's gonna be a flour thing. Yep. And we wanna kinda get it everywhere. You gotta keep it moving. Yep. Once it's all, there you go, keep the flour moving. Okay. If it becomes a problem. It smells so good. Oh my gosh. And it, I can see it is slightly already. This is gonna free things up. This will also help things come unstuck from the edge of the pan. Yep. You don't wanna do so much of it that. No, we have to go a little more though. Mm -hmm. Looks like that middle, and that, let me lower that down a bit too. Yeah. So we've been working off a medium high heat, mm -hmm. which is a little on the heavy side. So how you doing? Yeah, no, this you is good. In? Yeah, as long as it's able to work and move. Yeah. We don't want anything burning. We're still gonna keep coming down. Now this is the difference with gas. You bring it down, it comes down. Yes. With electric, you bring it down, it mm, mm. works its way down. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful. Like I said, okay. I want to make sure you're not nothing right. gets burned. Yep. If anything, do a little bit more mix. Yep. And we'll push it off the heat for a second while we get to the next stage. Okay, that sounds okay. good. So it is going to be warm, isn't it? There yep. we go. We'll slide it over. I'll do this, and you tell us what's next. So actually, next. we're going to finish with the chicken stock, and we're going to add our Dijon mustard to it. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it did get some color. Yeah. I'm seeing. Mm -hmm in the flour, so now we're gonna bring it back. So we, this one's three cups of the chicken stock. Three cups, yep. So that's four, Fair but off. you've removed a cup. I did. Yes. So go right I like right to make ahead. things easier for myself, you there know, right? Go. 
Absolutely. Nice and easy. And all, all that stuff that's stuck is going to come out as this cooks. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to add Some our little, shown. no, our little flavor bits. Mm -hmm. So when we, oh yeah, when we did do the chicken, we put aside some little bits of flavor because we didn't want to burn them, nope. but we didn't want to leave them out either. Nope. And since we're, you can take them out. You don't have to put them back in. If your preference is to say, oh no, no, it's not quite healthy enough. That's okay. <laughs> no, no. I mean, everybody's different. Right. right. You have to, so some people say, yep, I can follow this recipe to a T. Others will not. They'll be like, I'd love to follow this recipe to a T, but my doctor would be really upset with me. Right. <laughs> so here, I'll take right. that. Exactly. Out of your hand. Thank you so much. <laughs> this smells so, so delicious. There you go. So now, see, so That's this is definitely, it's a different approach to the flour. A lot of times I do flour where I take it, mix it with cold water, get a nice little paste oh, almost yeah. going, and then add it right. in. And but it doesn't it. do the browning. Yep. So whereas I really right. feel this browns, it also kind of holds on to flavor that yes. way. So either approach works, but for this recipe, we get it in there nice and early. Right. Oh uh, wait, let me smell. Oh, it's got to come to a, here we go. Now we can stop bringing now the temperature bring up for up. sure. So we're actually going to stir in our orzo right now. You're going to put in we're the orzo We're going to bring now. the orzo right now. And we want to so bring it So even before we reach the boil? Even before we reach the boil, yeah. Really? You're ambitious, aren't you? I am. <laughs> like, I okay. Am. But we're well, cooking the orzo. I am not recommending this. Yeah. <laughs> this <Okay>. is her. <laughs> but we're, we're I, I'm just the assisting. Recipe. Oh, yeah. you're the one who made the recipe. I did. Did I you made do the recipe. it the same way? I did it the exact, exact same way. Exact same recipe way. Calls. Yes. Wow. And they are really, they love their orzo. Get it in there. Although we have. To, you have to admit, now the recipe did say to do the orzo very quickly. It said it, six minutes, it did not say six And I don't know what orzo cook will now. cook in six minutes. No, me very neither. Very few pastas cook in six right. minutes. Right, yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. Your, maybe your angel hair spaghetti, maybe. Yeah, it's Maybe the little hair, stars, yeah. I forget what the farina is, or what are those little stars called? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, the little, those. But other than that, so, because we do a lot of soups and a lot of right. stews, and she likes her chicken soups. Yeah. And the pasta just, when this is done, that's when it goes in. Right. It Did you want to add the garlic now? So the extra garlic? Yep, the extra garlic. I'd All say right. we can add in as well. I'll borrow okay. that. Yep. Because that's, we don't, just like you wouldn't want crunchy orzo, you don't want chewy garlic. No, <laughs> no, no. No. No, no, no. And it didn't get reduced down with like the rest of the garlic, so it's really going to bring out a nice little pop to the flavor. Yes. And that's what we want. We yes. want a little, we want to notice it, but we don't want to be overwhelmed. Right. So. Yeah. There we go. So this can take around like I think it took me around like eleven minutes to make. Once it starts boiling, yeah. then it'll take it about eleven minutes. Okay, so I guess we'll let this come to a boil and come back in a few minutes. Yep, that sounds and good. We'll take uh, we can take you into the next steps. Now when it's after it's done comes to a boil and it's actually spent some time, that's when the heavy cream will go in. Is it? Yes. So that becomes one, like the final steps. It of is. This, yeah. Right? So once it's cooked, then you add the heavy cream and the cheese. Oh, it's so yum. Okay. It's that decadent. sounds awesome. And um, and who's going to be the tester? You testing? No, you had it. I know. I've already had it. You've had it. it. Yeah. Well, but this is my take on it. I made her change things. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to both test. How's that? that I'll test good, it right? first, though. I'll be a total guinea pig and okay. I'll risk it all for some chicken. All right, I sounds love good. <laughs> Who doesn't love chicken? So. All right, we'll okay. see you guys in a few see minutes. You in a pepper. And we're gonna go skin side down. Let's see, that's coming, yeah, you know what? Put that goes skin side down, there's one. And we'll do our second one. Pepper and salt, you there, it's there. It's hard to see it. So salt, skin side down. So this is gonna go about five minutes on the skin side down, and then we'll flip them over, five more minutes, and it's gonna go on this pan, and we're gonna put it into the oven, and that's While gonna be, the the that's gonna keep it, our oven is set real low, 175 degrees. It's just to maintain the chicken temperature, and we're not trying to cook it anymore, it's cooking here. Right. So, but we also don't want cold chicken in the end. Yeah. And if we're crisping up the skin, you could actually add it back into the broth in the end, but now you're kind of taking away all your crispiness. Now you're making it like 
you're saturating it. Right. Whereas, we're trying to avoid that. Exactly. And this is her recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, have to say... Who found this recipe? So, well, actually, how this all started... <laughs> uh, so when Dwayne and I were talking... Well, when Dwayne and I That's, were talking, oh, we he wanted to do a one-pot recipe. So yes. then I was on the hunt for a one-pot recipe. Yes, I mean, because who wants to have a ton of dishes when you're cooking, right? So one-pot meal for the week always works well, in my house. Well, that's just it. So, but, but we're busy, right? We're right. working all day, we, work. we don't want to spend a lot of time. But yeah. you know what I discovered? Even when you're not busy, you still don't want to spend a ton of time That's putting true. something together. Right, right. And the easiest way to satisfy everybody, put it all in one place. Yes. And then, you, hey, you don't like the chicken, pick it out. Yeah, <laughs> you don't exactly, have to have it. I know. You can, you can I have take family members that don't like mushrooms. You know, sorry, but, but you're getting these. Yeah. <laughs> But exactly. You, Pick you up know, what you don't. That's like. why I like Chinese food. Yeah. You when you get so you get Chinese food, they always put big chunks of peppers, big chunks of onions, that's and if true. you don't like them, you can take them Just out. Just take them nice out. Nice and easy. Right. This, yeah, it's gonna stay in there. <laughs> so we're at what? Maybe two or three minutes. Let's see if we can. See, it's just starting to crisp up on the edge. Yep. It's not quite there yet. So we're gonna let that little guy go. We want to actually see a nice little browning on here. Now this one's a little bigger than that one. So he'll probably take a little longer. What I want to do, I'm going to turn it though. I noticed this side of the, the out was actually browning more than the other side. Ah. So I put the lighter side in. Same thing here, this edge is yep. browning more. Because it's only that little circle in the middle, the actual burner. Right. So we'll spin it around and we'll adjust it. And that way we get a nice even cooking. That way it cooks nice and even yeah. all the way around. And now uh, we have, boy, we got a. A few ingredients here. Yes, we do. So it's almost like we're making a risotto, but we're using orzo. orzo. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think about using orzo? Is there, could you substitute? Absolutely. Would, like you I would think, is rice, wouldn't rice be a decent substitute? You could or do quinoa? rice, quinoa, I, brown rice would be great. Brown you know, rice? there's a lot more I fiber like brown in rice. there. Yeah. I really do, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like the, um, I like pilaf. Yeah. So I think a pilaf would be tough to really work with. You'd almost have to do it like we're treating the chicken because you really want to brown your pilaf, right? Right. But you don't want to just put it into a chicken, you know, stock like we got exactly. here. Exactly. Exactly. So. But you could substitute it for, and you know, we were talking about bonza pastas earlier. Oh, yeah. So uh, bonza uh, pasta is a lot with uh, the chickpeas, yeah. um, but you could certainly do that if you were trying to go, you know, for maybe a more low carbohydrate version. There's so many different things that you can yeah. do with now this Now that's recipe. high protein, high fiber? It's very high because fiber. Because it's not flour based, wheat based, it's, it's chickpeas. Chickpea. So it's yeah. based on, is chickpea technically a legume or no? Is it a bean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, legume, yeah, yeah. You know, chickpeas are one of those like unsung heroes. Beans are really, a lot of bean pastas are Oh, coming. look at, oh, we're getting look nice at color now. Yeah. yeah. Notice, I'm gonna keep that to the outside. Oh, and you actually deboned these, right? Yeah, so we had chicken that had bones in it. It wasn't, it was, it was just thighs that had only one bone in it. Yep. So, and yeah, so we deboned it. It kind of helps us to butterfly it out. And I really like, now you can do this recipe much more healthy, yep. conscious, and not use the chicken skin. Gotcha. Personally, I'm flavor conscious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more into, I want it to be oh, good. We are now, too, I did yeah. re also remove really large pockets of fat. You know, I like the flames, I like to see my flames. I'm, I'm really, really a fan. I completely agree with you. And what's mid? That's mid. Six is our, yeah, we're there. So we're still a little off the browning. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to push this one to the side. Put this one right on the middle. Let's see if that browns up in the center All right. quickly. That works. Because we want to make sure we yeah. get some, our chickens cooked through. Middles are always the toughest, right? Your edge is going to brown up first, right. no matter where it is. And we have our thermometer here, our meat thermometer. You want to make sure your chicken gets to 165 degrees for at least 15 seconds. Yes. 165 and, degrees. Uh, is that what it you like to touch for 15 with that particular meat thermometer? Is it, yeah, well, it actually, well, all thermometers. So you want to make sure that it reaches that internal temperature. Within 15. So. For 15 seconds, it should stay at that temperature. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I always so you thought, hold the thermometer in there for that long. I yeah. thought, well, as long as it showed that temperature, like it got there and showed it, you were good. Yeah, yeah. But, but they say 15 and well, the reason seconds. I think that is because of resting. 
So we al right. I always rest the meat after we yeah. take it off before cutting it so it doesn't lose the juices. Yeah. And while it rests, it still cooks. It is, yeah. So that's why I'm surprised that it couldn't hold the temperature for 15 seconds because it's really still cooking. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> so a lot of times what I end up doing is that, like, I start Ooh. checking it at yeah. 160. You know what? Is it crisping up for you? That's crisping up now. So we're going to put that aside. And we're going to bring the big one over. Let's see how the big one's looking. Oh, look at that. Nice. You know what? I think we can just flip them. Flip them, great. Yeah. Get them a little bit of time flipped. Yeah. Because we did. We got a nice little, we got some color going there. We do. Yeah. I like a crispy skin when I'm doing oh. chicken thighs, that's for sure. Well, I'm a huge wings fan. I make wings. wings. Ah. And, and actually, on our channel, I'm starting a new series that uh, coming out in two days. It starts. Wow. So each month, it's Dwayne's World of Wings. Dwayne's World of Wings. Yep. Each month, like I'm going to make a wings that represent a different country. Wow. So I started off simple. I started with the United States. That was our first of country. Course, and what yeah. did I make? Buffalo wings. Nice. All right. Yeah, what yeah, else? Yeah, what, yeah. You know, you have to, right? right? You really have to. So, but I also made my personal take on buffalo wings. So, buffalo wings, uh, we did Frank's Red Hot. Sorry, they make the best wing sauce. You can go all over the place. You're going to find Frank's on your wings. Good to know. Tabasco isn't. It's used. Yep. It's not as popular. Uh, I see Frank's everywhere. Franks, yeah, I see I know, Tabasco I in a lot of restaurants, but not on wings. And I actually like the taste of wings made with Frank's over Tabasco. Yeah. But anyways, I also make very, very hot wings using my home, uh, my hot sauces. Some are homemade. Some are that I've just I purchased much hotter than like your Frank's, uh. and I make it a lot different. So I wanted to show, I consider it buffalo, but it's not your traditional buffalo. Gotcha. You know why? It was actually my wife's idea, because she's like, you eat wings every other week. <laughs> like you eat so wings you make your regularly, own wings. but I wow. really make my own wings all the time. Well, you know, and too, you know, like if there's a game on, right, people love to have wings on. So right. I think that's a great idea to do Let's that. Let's see how this is looking. No, no, no. It's, it, all right, so it is sticking a little, right? And, okay. it's, and it's a little challenge to get it to flip, and that's where you're going to come in. Okay. And you're going to come in, and you're going to see if you can do some scraping. Start to scrape oh. up some of the parts that are sticking. Can we? Is it working, or do you need something a little more? I think I need rigid? something a little more rigid. Yeah. I don't know, Mike. I don't know if we have anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? You got to really work at it. You know, get some butter in there and really try to loosen it up. This is actually pretty stiff too. Yeah. So let me see if I can. Try to scrape it like that. I'll try to scrape a little uh. extra with this. You know, I think I'm almost making more progress with this than yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm getting it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I love making poultry of all different forms. Mm -hmm. I love making chicken, turkeys, whatever. And so I don't well, mind normally, finding recipes like this. Well, normally know? when I make chicken, I usually bake it. I don't normally put it on the stove top. Well, these little Especially Dutch, chicken thighs, these, yeah. These, these are great. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they really disperse you heat well, and anything. you can brown in yes. them nicely. Right. If you did this in a non-stick pan, you'd be really hard pressed to get it to brown, especially yep. on an electric stove. Right. Right? So yeah. it was a kind of a, you'd have different challenges you'd be, we'd be facing here. Right. So guess what your challenge is? What's our temperature? How are we doing? Are All we right. there yet? I see a little Thanks. pink color. I know it's not quite there, okay. but let's check this big one. I'm going to guess 140. I'll bet you know 140? One. That's going to be my guess. Let's see. And that's truly just a guess. It is 128. That's it. That's it. Ooh, so we didn't even reach 130. <laughs> All right, how about the little one, though? You better check that one. So does this have to, oh, it's gone right back down. What do you got? 140 for that one? 129. They're only a degree. Of, wow. Is that thing working? I don't, I, I'm oh not sure God. I trust this. <laughs> Let's see, 144. All right, 140. 140. There you go. That's, but right. it depends where you hit it. You always test in the thickest part. The thickest part, part yeah. You, so that's the real temperature, and you're saying that's like 130. 134. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we still got a little cooking to go, and you can kind of tell we still have a bit of pink showing up color-wise. Yep. We still got a little of that. Look at it, see, let's, let's get it pretty good. It cleans up. It's looking really nice in mm -hmm. there. Okay. Now, this was kind of my, like you had 
wanted to do all four at once. I did. We might have been able to. Yeah. I just didn't want to crowd it so much. I know. Well, actually, so when I made this dish at home, it I actually had eight of them in there. But they were pretty small. They weren't too big, and? you know? And they didn't have skin on them okay. either. You so know? that was why I wanted to not crowd so much, was to, because we're trying to brown up skin, and when you put a lot of stuff in there, it gets really hard to get the temperature up. Yes. It's just. Yes, it is. Yep. All right, let's. Yeah, that's still not there yet. But that's okay. It's coming along. So we do. So what other ingredients are we going to be adding to this and what? Okay. We have our little collection here. Yes. Yes. So this so. is a mushroom and chicken orzo recipe. Yep. So we have our yep. baby bellas over yep. here. Baby bellas, and you could also use what? Criminies. 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 Yes, but absolutely. Baby bellas, easy to find. They're very similar mushrooms. So yes. I'll give you that. They are yes. different, but the texture-wise, flavor-wise, and these are beautiful. They oh, are. There you go. They are. So that's a nice. And I had a hard time actually finding primity mushrooms. So I'm like, you know what, baby bellas, I think are like the next best thing. And I'm a firm believer of use what you can find. You right. can adapt the recipe. If yes. you really don't like mushrooms, you know what? Maybe you don't put mushrooms in. Right. So now I noticed that this looks like Bermuda onion. <laughs> it really does, because yeah. diced stuff, you really can't tell much different. But right. it is, it's shallots. It's shallots, yeah. yes. Now, yeah, so shallots, go ahead. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, okay, your, so, so shallots and onions, right? They're kind of similar. We, you can't interchange them. But the cellular structure is actually different, um, the shallot, compared to a regular onion. So this, the shallots actually cook down a lot easier. So it's easier to get that nice caramelization. You can get it a lot quicker. So they're great for stews and sauces, you know, things like that. Um, or even if you're trying to do like an orzo recipe, like what Our we're doing with today. Today's recipe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, I never realized way back when, well, two things. One, I didn't realize that they are, I know they were same family, but they are right. cousins, so there yes. is differences. The Allium family. Yes. Yeah, like with garlic but and, yep. They're strong. So I always thought that they were more mild because that's what I was told. Oh, you shallots, right. they're so mild. And I went, I said, oh, they're mild, so I'll use extra. Yeah. And I found out quickly, they're not so mild. No. <laughs> it was a lie. No, <laughs> they no, are no. very flavorful. Yes. So be more selective in your amounts with the, when you're using shallots. You yes. have to be a little bit more. If you're not a big onion fan, you may want to take the shallots and reduce it a bit because it is onion Plus. Right, and we're doing <laughs> garlic as well, right? Yes. So we're trying to, you know, make sure that everything is a little more Ooh, balanced. Okay. Let's take a temperature reading. All right, this looks, this has it. some nice color coming through now. Oh, you know what? This one, I think I want to put that in the middle. How's the big one? Okay, let's check him. We're gonna check again. So, um, yeah. So what? As far as the garlic goes, uh, we do. It is minced very fine, which is nice. Yep. So we're and at 145 okay, now. Okay, so it's coming. Yep. You, you Do you want me to wait on him, the one yeah, on the... Yeah, it seemed like it needed a little... Needed but a you little can check more. it. No harm. Okay. We'll find a nice thick spot there. And um, we're going to do the garlic in two parts. So we're going to add some garlic early right. on when we do the stock, when we add yes. our stock and let it really cook through. And we're going to reserve a little About bit... 140. ...for the end. Okay. Because we want it to stand out a little... To, it's easy to lose the garlic flavor. The more you cook it, the more it disappears. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to keep it from disappearing, and yeah, we're gonna we'll add a little towards the end. Now these are really coloring up yes, nicely now up because really good. I think just from our checking yeah, <laughs> the temperatures, exactly. it's like we're so like, hey, that's browning up nice. Yeah. But um, you know, and onions and garlic are really great for the gut as well. So Ooh. some people don't think about it. Yes, of course, we have like the flavor component. Yeah, the complimentary flavors. Yes, But yes. I guess what, they're also good for your... They're good for the gut, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so because there's bacteria in the gut, and yep. the good guys love it. They munch on it. They love onions and garlic. So it actually boosts your immune system if you feed the good guys. Right. Oh, that's good. Hey, so, yeah, so the good bacteria and appreciates it. Your, yes, they do. It does. They and do. And you know what? I use a lot of both. Hey. I especially onion. We keep honestly at least five pounds of onions in the house at all times, yes. and there's yep. only two we of do us. Too. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I know that's and there's good. always good. an onion half cut in our fridge in a Ziploc baggie that I haven't finished, but it never goes bad because it never sticks around long yeah. enough. Yeah, so no, that's we're good. Always using it. So yeah, so but one comment I want to say is, looking at the recipe. Yep. This is about five minutes aside. This has gone on. Yeah, the, a little more than five minutes. I know, the rest of said five minutes. I'm like, I don't think it's going to take five minutes for and, these. And we really can't bring the heat up above where we're at. Right. Because we're actually making, uh, I forget what the name of that is, when you make crispy little meat pieces, kind of like bacon, but what is, there's a name. Crispy but, meat pieces. Yeah, oh. it, there's a name for when you crisp up meat, and that's what we got going on here. But that's going to go with our onions and and, sh and I don't think we're going to need any extra butter. No, it I don't really think we have plenty like of fat there's right plenty from the of skin, fat. so we don't need to add and any And it's fat. actually rendering out from in between the, the actual meat in the, because we're using thighs. Right. If you had done this with something like breasts and whatnot, you would probably still need to add more butter because you're not getting any fat. No, unless you did like uh, split chicken breasts, which actually we use a lot in our house, you know, because it does have the skin on it. You know, my kids, my kids love split chicken now, breasts. Now, what did this... Uh, was it, did it call for thighs specifically? It did, the recipe did. called for thighs specifically, it yep. Did. But you know, what's nice about thighs is that it's very um, economical to buy thighs. Absolutely. As opposed to buying like a whole like chicken breast, cause you know. And like, I've never had a dry thigh. I've had no. plenty of dry chicken breasts. Exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. so it's nice and tender. Yeah, um, but always. You know, but you know, hey, like you wanna save some money at the store, but you're still gonna get high quality protein. It's good to choose a chicken thigh. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this is, um, like I said, it's looking wonderful. I'm just concerned that it's not reaching that. Why isn't it reaching that temperature for us? <laughs> it's because we want it to, It's Dwayne. because we, yes. That's why. It's the watch pot philosophy, yes. right? We're watching yes, it a it little is. too. So you need to look away. <laughs> Maybe it'll actually, come on now, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. And we don't, now we could honestly conserve the heat and cover this but we would take away the ability to really crisp it up. This has such a beautiful crisp going on the skin, I would say it's not worth covering just to get it to cook a little faster. It right. would cook faster. Yes. But uh, we've done, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's really. Well, it is gonna go in the oven. It's gonna go, right? yep. So I think that it could. I think we could safely. I think we could too. Move forward with yes, this. Yes, and check the temperature. You give us a, hey, it beeped. It beeped. <laughs> All right. That's the real, so you, yeah. That, that's you know what, what I, we want. I'm I sure like the, the beep. Time. You like you're, the beep? No, you know why? Why? Because it shows you're not just saying it's exactly there. <laughs> yeah because not everyone people might certain, not read the thermometer this thing told me to so let me take this one i can take this guy out and i'll put it all on right there, so we're gonna put gonna him gonna right in the oven this nice little piece which looks like i should just be eating it but uh, i'll <laughs> let it go for now no nope. how's the other one is that one the other one should be fine yes go ahead i'll let you check it first all right come on go 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 uh, uh. Look hey. at that, it's cut, taking it out. We're there. There we go. So it did, it took a bit of effort, a little bit of time. It did, but it's worth it. And but look it, at all of that oh beautiful brown bits on the bottom. All right, so oh, if you could gonna open the oven awesome. for me. Absolutely. And we'll maintain for now. We'll just go right in the middle. Okay. Uh, there we go. You stay in there for now. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to be a little more aggressive Okay. with getting some of this up. Go for it, Dwayne. There we go, we turned up now. Yeah. Okay. Because we're really gonna stick early and yep. hard if we don't yep. break up some of this. But we don't wanna lose these drippings. These no. things are, this is the flavor of exactly. what we're trying to do. It's here. You don't wanna waste all that hard work. You just It was did. a lot of work mm -hmm. that we put in there. And all what right. we're gonna do, it's gonna go back. We're gonna put it back in. Because you don't want it to burn Once either, we right? Once we yeah. correct. Because this really is a lot of that flavor, but I don't want it burning in this pan. Right. Because then it's not a good flavor. No. <laughs> it changes no. from a, a really nice flavor to no. a eh, not so nice. Exactly. Okay, but we're so, gonna keep this moving. So now we're gonna add our, so what do you wanna? Here. So first we have to do our, we're still gonna finish our chicken. And we'll bring you guys back once this, after we've done this yeah, chicken, we'll so that we, when we get to that next stage. But just know that we'll keep, we're working right with the same pan. We're not stopping, we're just letting it keep yep. going. I mean, you've got so much good things already happening in here. Right. There's no reason to, 
like start over, clean the pan, any of those silly things. No, no, no. This <laughs> and I've got my right up. <sighs> what chicken bits? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff for a stock. And at one point we're adding a stock into it right. and it'll render down inside of it and it'll add so much flavor to what's going on. Yes. We'll play it a little safe. We're gonna go with a lower temperature so we really do need to you know, come back. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, but for now, we're gonna All get right. this, look at this took off a lot faster. It did. The first time when we first went and put the chicken in the first time, nowhere near as right. active. Right? All right, so, so we'll see you in a few minutes when it's or, all cooked. Yeah, we'll see you in a few seconds, your time. All right. So, so this is looking really good. This is really, I mean that orzo, it, started, it looked like soup. Yes, when we first <laughs> when we started, it really it did. It really looked like yeah. soup. And, um, so, now our final bits here. We're gonna add in our spinach. We want it to get nice and wilted. I don't mind going a little heavy on the spinach, you know. Well, spinach so shrinks much. so much. It really does, <laughs> you, it really does. Like that whole thing could shrink down to a little bit of yep. spinach. It so. could, it could. There's okay. a lot of nutrition mm -hmm. in here, Absolutely. so you know, we wanna make sure that our I, spinach has a time to shine. I love and you too. baby spinach. Mm. It is, and it is just so good for you. And we have a little bit of some heavy cream here. This is more of a higher calorie recipe. <laughs> uh, you think? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's, that's the question. Could you use a lighter cream? You could if you right. wanted to, absolutely. But you know what I what I actually lately, so I do a lot of nutritional counseling. Um, yeah. I do a lot of home visits. And this is Parmesan cheese. And it's, this is also pa fresh Parmesan fresh cheese. Fresh grated, I grated um, it earlier, it was nice. You did, <laughs> you did. Um, but a lot of times I find too that a lot of families are looking for more higher calorie recipes because their loved one or their, you know, who they're taking care of has lost some weight, unintended weight loss, you know. Absolutely. So, you know, using things like heavy cream, cheese, butter, you know, like those are and ways that we can increase the calorie content. And depending on the actual kind of like the weight of the person, I'll use my father-in-law as an example. Mm -hmm. He's very thin. Mm -hmm. He's very almost frail. And over the past year, He's 87. Yep, yep. And we've been giving him cookies. <laughs> he put on 15 pounds in the last year, <laughs> but he was 125 pounds. Wow. He desperately needed that 15 pounds yes. because yeah. if he got sick, yeah. his body has no, no reserves. Right, right. It's a much you higher know. risk. So people will say, oh, well, you know, you look a little chunky. That chunky could save you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and so. being at his age, he deserves to have oh, uh, a few more. So, cookies, you so know. my mother-in-law is like, ah, he shouldn't eat all that junk. <laughs> it's like, what? It's saving him. If he gets in trouble, you'd be glad you gave him that extra cookie. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. and yes. It, and he's in a nursing home, and, and the food okay. is very the mm -hmm. same yeah. day after day. Day in and, and day out. And you know what? He really loves his cookies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would not, if he said he wanted a cigar, I think I'd be like, sure, sure why not? Go on ahead. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you know? But it is. It was good to actually see him put on weight. He did. He was actually a little bit heavier, but when he first went to the nursing home, he lost weight. Right. He didn't want any of the food. Yep. He didn't want, so we really started bringing him foods and we found out, you know, his big thing, chocolate chip cookies, he's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he gets a few extra cookies. I All hope right. when I'm old, I get some. I know. <laughs> Same here. So, this, this looks look so good. Uh, and get that nice pop of color from the spinach. And I think we can, we can turn it off. At this point, she looks yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. So, how's these? Oh, look, nice and warm. Nice and warm. Yeah. So, how I served it in my house, I served it with a bowl. Okay. Um, well, you serve it up with a bowl. Well, you know what? We got a little bowl here. We could just okay. have a little so tasting. So, we put a, a nice little. Yes, yeah, so we have um, a spoon. Are we, we going to use that? A, I can try with this. I also have a spoon here. Okay. Let me go with a spoon. Here, I got a fresh you, one right in we'll here. We'll find a nice for big spoon in there. Yep. Wait, no, here's a real big one. Wow, that one wins, there okay. We, go. we got a big one. <laughs> yeah, so now we can actually make mm. a nice bowl mm -hmm. that make sure you get some mushrooms in there. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, we got a little bit on the edge. We'll fix that up later. 
Which actually I found out you're a mushroom hunter too. I right? like to hunt mushrooms. Yeah. I've been actually started about 12 years old. I started really? mushroom hunting. Oh, yep, okay. got uh, the Audubon Society Guide to Mushroom Hunters Get and you Mushroom Hunters rain. Guide. Oh and my gosh. Let me tell you, I was as happy as could be. Yeah. I, it it actually was gave me gave me a lot to do. Really. And it was very much like I enjoyed it. I discovered there are so many mushrooms you don't find in the store really? that are just so good. And yeah, I, and we have friends now that hunt a lot more than I get the chance to. Mm -hmm. and they give us mushrooms and we love it <laughs> awesome you know I'm gonna chop up just a little bit of some parsley here okay. just to give it a little another little pop I'm of gonna color nothing too I'm crazy gonna you're gonna stick put those a in chicken there. back in there keep them warm yep all right I'm gonna take this off the heat Move it up here. Oh, this you is already off. added some parsley. Look at I you. I got ahead of you. Yeah, you I did. Did. Little, you did. You can add some little yeah. Yeah, garnishing there. You can garnish okay. it a bit more. We'll keep this warm uh, as well. Okay. Side. Very good. Are you going to try some? We are both going to try We're some. We're both going to try. Absolutely. All right. Let's so, get it. Let's see. Okay. Oh, there's a couple forks. Okay. There we go. Which fork? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. You like that one. And well, you got a really sharp knife somewhere to cut a little bit of the chicken, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think right. we, well, we could try to get chicken, but I yeah. don't know. I think we're going to have to gnaw really no. <laughs> through the skin. It's going to be tough. Well, I yeah. want to try this just, orzo first. All right, I'll come this on this been, side. Yep. I have to find a mushroom, though, mm -hmm. and I see one there, so I'll go to your side. Oh, and I got almost the best bite. The only thing I'm missing is the chicken, mm -hmm. but I do. I've got the spinach, the orzo. I even got a little bit of garnish. See, my piece is garnished. <laughs> What are your thoughts? The mushrooms cook perfectly. Yes, we'll they are. We'll start there. Those mm -hmm. really came through. Mm -hmm. All of our um, our scallion, our garlic, there's nothing chewy in there that is right. cooked through. Yep. It has a nice smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume that we're picking up smoky flavor because of the way we did all our browning up front yep. early on. Mm -hmm. That really, and um, you know what? Not a huge fan of thyme. It's good here. It is. <laughs> it's balanced very it's, nice. We're both not thyme people. So yeah. when we first saw that in the recipe, we were a little we're, concerned. We're hesitant. Yes. It, yeah. Yes. But I'll tell you, that's... It's good. We gotta try chicken. We do have to try chicken. <laughs> we have so to do you want me to take the chicken out or we just like maybe tear um, a piece off? Let's see if this knife will actually get us to it. Let's All right. try it. Okay. I'm gonna see if I think the chicken should be tender enough. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna hand you the knife wow. so you can Get your little piece of chicken, but I want the full experience. Right. I don't just want the chicken. I don't just, I want to get my mushroom, my skin, my chicken. Can I manage it all? <laughs> this is a challenge. Let me eat over the plate here. But yeah, I got a little bit of everything. All right. What are you thinking? Good? The chicken is still very moist mm -hmm. and nice and it even has a little bit of crisp left on the skin i don't think this recipe would be anywhere near as good without the skin mm. it's really making it mm -hmm. and uh it gives you that contrast yeah so you don't just have one texture going on here we the mm -hmm. mushrooms added a different texture yeah the chicken the, with this crispy skin has another texture mm -hmm. the orzo itself is a little bit of that creamy so this is a overall a pretty this good is a keeper. recipe. This, yeah, this recipe is a keeper. I'm so glad really. you liked it. And it's not overly complicated. No, you know, no. all basic ingredients. There's nothing really like unique. Like, ooh, can I find that in here? Right. You can find all of this easily. Exactly. I like it. Okay. We, uh, I'm glad uh, we decided to do I this know, one. I know. I right? know. It's nice to it collaborate. It was a good choice. Oh, well, and thank you so much for joining us today on Cooking with Coastline. And, and I'm again, eat this. a special thank you to <laughs> Dwayne. Oh, thank you for having Coastline me. Coastline for joining us. And stay tuned for more episodes. Yeah, I hope uh, you invite me back. Yes, we'd love to have you back. And we'll find a little, we'll find a different recipe. All right. We'll find something nice and healthy that maybe we won't do a one pot. Ah, yeah, we'll, we'll get do adventurous. Different, yeah. maybe we'll do a two pot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, All uh, right. thanks everybody. Uh, so please, if you get a chance, Dwayne and Edia, Food Travel Fund, that's us. We'll have a link down below, and there you go. I'm glad okay. I could be here. That's All it. right. Thanks. Thank Good you. Good seeing you.